today we're heading back to mom's to do another test ride. How was it? I just dropped it. This time I'll be test riding a Yamaha <laughs> XSR 900. So Eric sent me a message the other day and he was like, hey Bugsy, you gotta get back down here because we have a 900 in stock and he said it's in the Marlboro livery. So it's like that mostly white with a little bit of red and a little bit of black. And you know that I love that vibe because that's pretty much exactly what my XS650 looks like. I'm looking forward to trying out the XSR 900 because when I rode the 700, you may remember, I was like, okay, this is cool and comfortable and modern and, you know, it has everything that I'm looking for in my next bike, except it wasn't really that powerful. And like I ride a 650 now and I want something that's like actually going to blow my hair back. So I think this could be a really good option for me. The only thing is it definitely looks like a sport bike and I didn't think that's what I would be stepping into next, but the heart wants what the heart wants. So join me on another test ride at Mom's in Foxborough, Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I'm gonna be test riding a new XSR 900 in a Marlboro livery, let's go. <laughs> Tell us what you're about to jump on. Whoa. I'm hopping on the XSR 900. So Whoa. last time, last time I was here, I rode the XSR 700. And wow. this looks a lot different. <laughs> this is a beast. What do you think? My first impressions are it's definitely not my style. Yeah, why? But I'm that kind of excites me at the same time. I don't know, it looks like a straight up sport bike. Well, it's a naked, it's a sport naked. You gonna put me on the back? Look at these, it's so little. This is so high. Imagine sitting way up here. No, I feel like I would fly off. It'd be like you were like on my back. Yeah, it's definitely a really cool looking bike though. Maybe I'll get one. <laughs> it's a nasty livery, right? It's insane. Yeah. It's so cool. I mean, you know, it just makes it go faster, right? Yeah, the colors make it go faster. It's a pearl. Did you see it? Oh, no, oh, I didn't white, notice like that. that. Yeah. This is new, new. Yeah, 6 miles on it. What? I think the other XSR that you did uh, had similar miles, too. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm a little freaked out by Don't it. Don't be freaked out. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not like rip your face off power or anything like that. It's just a really nasty looking bike. That is. They're really cool. This is such an interesting red. It's almost like orange. It's like red. a orange. Yeah. Nice. There she is. Enjoy. for sure and like Eric said it's not rip your face off speed but this thing's clearly got more power than its little brother 
the 700. It's got a quick shifter. I remember when I first started riding and like getting to understand how the clutch worked. I thought clutchless like DTC and quick shifters were really cool. It was really appealing to me. But now that I understand, now that I've been riding for a little bit longer and I understand the clutch more and I know how to use it, when to use it, why to use it, I don't see myself necessarily wanting a quick shifter but it's cool to have like it's cool to try out but I guess what I'm trying to illustrate is I wouldn't buy a bike just because it had a quick shifter but let's test it out here we go share my initial thoughts on the positioning like how I'm sitting on this bike I am not comfortable I am immediately feeling awkward <laughs> Let's talk about this display screen. I prefer the display on the Access R700, actually. I wasn't expecting them to be different, but design-wise, if you're gonna make a display that has a lot going on, you gotta make the information easy to look at. The, the way this is laid out is not easy for me to just glance at and know what's going on. Other than the speed and the gear, I don't, when I glance at it, I don't really know what else. Like the RPMs are lost to me. They're there, but it's not decipherable to me. I've been riding so many different kinds of motorcycles lately. I'm on the search for a new bike. It has to be modern and reliable, and it's got to inspire adventure. And last thing, it needs to be different handling and positioning from my current bike, the XS650. I want variety and options as I begin to build my mini motorcycle collection. and I wasn't sure I would test it out but I did and I liked it it's interesting um, but then in moments of sort of like like autopilot in my mind I would grab the clutch and downshift like when I saw like the cones because there was road work I immediately grabbed the clutch to downshift so it's interesting that like my mind doesn't automatically think to use the quick shifter let's run through the specs this is a 2024 Yamaha XSR900 in color Heritage White. 
with a 890 cc liquid cooled engine with a six speed transmission, a 3.7 gallon tank, and a wet weight of 425 pounds. The odometer read six miles at the start of my ride. Last thing I wanna mention here is anti-lock braking system, ABS. This feature is newly important to me after my stupid mistake on a rented Harley in Nashville, Tennessee. Anyway, this bike has it and I'm adding it to the list of must-haves for my next bike. I just got out of balance. All right, well, we bought this bike. <laughs> no! Yeah, that's it. No, there it is. Oh. How was it? I just dropped it. <gasps> pulling no. in. Oh. Oh, no. I just got out of balance and dropped it right here. Leaking? Yeah. Okay. Um. I've never dropped a bike like that. It happened. It happened, dude. It happened. I, I was watching you, and then I turned around and I heard it. Nuts. Okay. Uh, let me go get this out back to service real quick. Okay. Sorry, Eric. No, you're good. Were you trying to? Pull I was it in just. Right here? Yeah. I was going like this, and then. Like I'm okay. Yeah, I know. I you, like didn't. I'm just sorry, I didn't even ask. Are you okay? No, I apologize no, so much. I know. I mean, I'm definitely okay. That's okay. I, I hope the bike's okay. It's what? It's a light bike to lift up. I'll be right back. Okay. Is that oil? No, it was gas because yeah. it was flooding. So, did you. Is this still running? Yeah. Did you like it? <laughs> Take out the fact that. <laughs> My elbow kind of hurts. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> Um, Dude, what happened? I just, Again, I, don't I, was, know. I was following you around the parking lot with this on, I and know. then I shut it off and turn around and I hear dunk. Are they not gonna let me ride anything? Oh, else? you're done. <laughs> That's the bike you bought. No. Yeah, it's a good no. bike though. <laughs> I don't want that bike. Literally, uh, on the sheet it says you assume all damage for everything that you f up. I don't know. I don't know. I can't even begin the process. I think. Two major factors played a role in me dropping this bike. At first, I really couldn't understand what went wrong, but after some time has passed and the dust has settled, I reviewed the footage, which by the way was minimal. Justin had just turned the second camera off and the guys at Mom's tried to pull it up on the security cameras, but I was just out of frame. Anyway, the two things I learned. First of all, full lock positioning is different on every bike. Full lock meaning when the bars are turned all the way to the right or the bars are turned all the way to the left. All the way, like locked, like can't go any further. I didn't realize I had turned the bars as far left as possible and doing that at a super slow speed 
made me super off balance. Basically, it jolted me and I went down. The second thing I learned is coming to a stop with the wheel turned is a bad idea. Basically, when you're coming to a stop, you wanna be sure the bars are straight because if it's an abrupt stop and the suspension shoots you backwards, even a little like what happened here, at least you'll be going back straight. But if that wheel is turned, you'll be pushed off balance with zero forward momentum to save you. I believe what happened here was a combination of both of those things. The damage to the bike was not bad, but the damage to my ego was brutal. Once I found out the bike was okay and I wasn't on the hook for like buying it, I came back to reality and remembered mistakes happen. It was just a mistake. All right, so that was a little bit of a rough test ride. Well, the test ride itself was totally fine, but the ending was rough for me. Didn't necessarily stick the landing, if you will. But other than that, I had a great time here at Mom's and I'll be back. Nothing can keep you humble like a bike drop. If you made it this far, I'm guessing you're either like, whoa, this girl's whack, or you can relate to the story. And if that's you and you have a similar lesson learned, share it in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next week where I hopefully pass my inspection for my XS650.